When most people learn to use Microsoft Excel, and especially when they first learn formulas, all of those formulas are created at the bottom of the sheet or at the end of the data. Average, sum, min, max, a lot of formulas that will help you with data analysis are often put in a place where you've got to do a lot of scrolling. And if you put your formulas at the bottom of the sheet or the end of the data, if more data is added to that worksheet, then there's a really good chance that your formulas at the bottom will be overwritten. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a way of using all of the sheet and especially the top to do our data analysis. Yes, it involves auto filters and it also involves a formula. So auto filters, formulas, it's a great combination. So give me a couple of minutes and I'll show you how to use all of your worksheet and especially the top to do your data analysis in Microsoft Excel. In order to move my data analysis to the top of the sheet, first I'm going to need a little room. So first I'm going to move to the rows one and two and right click and insert a couple of blank rows. Then I'll need a couple of labels for my analysis. So first I'd like to see the sum of all of the salaries in column L. And I'd also like to see those same salaries averaged. Now it's time to break out a formula. And the formula that I'm going to use is the subtotal function. The subtotal function, as you can see from the tooltip, returns a subtotal in a list or database. Now, you'll also see subtotal on the data tab as a data analysis feature, but it's also a function. And the subtotal function works like this. In the subtotal function, the numbers 1 through 11 and 101 through 111 represent functions or calculations. For example, 1 and 101 are both averages. 9 and 109 represent sums. Subtotals 1 through 11 will include entries in the result that are in rows that are manually hidden by the user. Numbers 101 through 111 will ignore manually hidden values and calculate only the visible entries. But both 1 through 11 and 101 through 111 will ignore values that are hidden using an auto filter. So after selecting the function number that I'd like to use, in this case a sum, I'll type a comma and move to the next portion of the function, which requires me to select the range of data that I'd like to perform the subtotal function on. So I'll select the first cell in the salary column and then use control shift and then the down arrow to move to the end of the range. After selecting my range, I'll end the function by closing the paren on the right side and then pressing enter. And I'm given a sum of all of the salaries in that column. I'll move to the next cell and I'm going to need the average of the salary, so we'll once again use the subtotal function. And this time 101 to get an average. Once again we'll select the range of data in column L using our control shift and down arrow keystroke and then close the paren to seal the function and when I press enter now I have the average of the salaries in column L. My next step will be to apply the auto filters because I'll need to filter the data to change my analysis so I'll select the headers for my data and then move to the data tab and select filter. This applies the auto filters to each of the columns. And as my final step, I'd like to be able to scroll down without losing the headers. So I'm going to select the cell underneath employee number and then move to the view tab and then move to freeze panes and select the first option, freeze panes. 
Now the panes are frozen and I can scroll through my data without losing the headers. So now it's time to test out our little scheme and see what it can do. First I'm going to filter this data by the state or province field and deselect all the states except for New York. And when I click OK, you'll notice that the sum of salary and average of salary both change to only show the data based on the filter. And if I make any other adjustments, so for example the city down to Queens, I only get one salary and I get an average and sum of that one salary. I could do this on several more columns or I could even insert charts and have the charts changed based on the filters that I apply to the data. And one last tip, in both of our subtotal functions we are only looking at the existing range of data, but because your data can grow you can extend those ranges into the thousands, meaning that you could collect data to the bottom of the sheet, or at least to the extent of the auto filters, without ever having to make an adjustment to the formula and never ever having your function overwritten. So that's the subtotal function and combined with auto filters to create some great data analysis at the top of your data. So don't be stuck on the bottom. Try it out. Move your data analysis to the top in Excel. And until the next video, I'm Wayne.